Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so we will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so we'll know that you're watching and again if we are catching the replay go ahead and type in hashtag replay good morning to those of you that are just tuning in alive good morning good morning y'all know what to do go ahead and type in the comments god did it again god did it again it is a great day to be alive <laughs> good morning good morning so good to see you all let me go ahead and get this shared over to um my other ministry page i have been doing so well remembering to share this over there so let me just keep up the great work and <laughs> good morning all right as you all know what to do as you're coming on go ahead and share the broadcast oh i did not grab my bottle of water today so i guess i'll just be drinking my warm lemon water so go ahead and grab your water go ahead and grab your um your vitamins, your Bibles, your journals, whatever else you do in the morning during our rhythm and routine. Some of you go walking, um, some not, or not go walking, but walk in place or jump on your rebounders while we're listening to the one year Bible. So, whatever you need to do, go ahead and get yourself together. <laughs> Good morning. All right, let's see. I'm about to get this over, uh, shared over to the other page. Yes, I did it. All right, I remember. Good job. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Good morning. So good to see you all. Um, hold on. Sorry. I thought I got it, but it did not. Okay, I think we're good now. All right, sorry about that. So go ahead. Um, go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. It's a great day to be alive. If you have not already, make sure that you have grabbed your oil and that you have anointed your hands and make sure you have um, anointed your hands. And let's go ahead and say my hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch turns to gold. Amen. Everything I touch multiplies. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. Amen. I missed you all yesterday, but we'll blame that on Bo the Beagle. But I am glad I am here today. Praise the Lord. So if you are new to the broadcast, welcome. We're so glad you're here. You can find us here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you are not in our community, you will want to go to the search box and type in We Write the Word or my name and our We Write the Word when your Bible community will come up. And that's where I share the daily verse, the daily um, verses to meditate on as well as our prayer points. So if you're not in a group and you want to continue to read along with us, you'll want to get in the group. Good morning, Shanita. Good morning, Tamiko. Good morning, everybody. So, um, yes, I know. Blame it on Bo. The, we're we're, we're going to blame that on Bo the Beagle. I got a lot of messages. We're not going live. I'm like, no, I posted a replay on my page today. I am so sorry, but it's Bo the Beagle's fault. It's like a little, like we have another little baby. Dogs are like babies. All right, yes, B-E-A-U-X. Can't forget the X on the end. His, I have to share a picture of him in the comments again. I haven't shared him in a while. He is the cutest dog ever. Like the cutest dog I've ever seen. I have to show y'all a picture. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Have you shared the broadcast? If you shared, go ahead and type in hashtag shared. If you shared the gospel. Um, one way to evangelize, evangelizing is just sharing the word of God. And one way that you do that is by sharing this video. And I almost forgot to share, if you are new here, we are reading through the one-year Bible together. And the publisher is Tyndale. I share that because there are lots of different one-year Bibles. So this is the Bible reading plan we're going through again for year three. So excited. Um, so if you have your one-year Bible, that's great. If not, you can just listen along with us. And after the broadcast, I will share the link to um, everything that you need. It'll have where you can get the Bible. It'll have the Bible reading plan, the Bible promises. Um, I don't know. Whatever we, what, it'll have everything there at the link. I can't remember what else I linked. 
on that link tree for you all. So we are going to get started with a time of worship. I was a little sleepy this morning because um, I did a, a, we were on Zoom last night. We had a, a meal planning session that went really well with the ladies in my faith and wellness community. And I don't, I'm not normally live or doing anything on a Thursday night. So I didn't go to bed until like 11. Y'all type 11 in the comments and woke up at three. So I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> I took a nap. <laughs> All right, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started. So Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. You are God. You are good in every way there is to be good. And we say thank you. We thank you for waking us up on this morning. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We're so thankful for another opportunity to come together and to fellowship and to worship you and to spend time in your word. Y'all type in thank you. Yes, 11. I took a little nap. I was just like, oh. Yeah, but it was good. It, it was good. It was good. Some good information for them to help them uh, get started. So, or those that fell off track to get back on track. So, it, it was good. Um, well, we, yes. So we thank you, Father. <clears throat> we thank you for a sound mind. You all type that in the comments. We thank you, Father, for a sound mind. We thank you for protecting us from things through the night that we have no idea that you've protected us from we say thank you on today so as we are in worship you all continue to type in the comments at least one thing that you're thankful for and um also type in your your prayer requests in the comments so we are going to go into a song of worship and then dive into the word yes amen <laughs> Go ahead and begin to type your comments, uh, your prayer requests in the comments, whatever it is you're thankful for. you can, I just want you all to just close your eyes and just think about how good God has been to you. Just think about how faithful he has been, just all that he's done for you. Continue to fill the comments with your worship on this morning.
Hallelujah are you, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. He was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. We bless you. Get away. stay here for just a little bit longer. the walls that we have built are coming down today. Let all those walls come falling down. Thank you. 
ask you to soak it all the way, God. in heaven. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. No blockages. Shine your light this morning on our hearts, God. If there is anything that's standing in the way between us and you, we ask you to shine your light and soak it all away. All unforgiveness, all pain, all anger, all bitterness, whatever it is, just shine your light. Soak our hearts, God. Hallelujah. Thank you. to go deep today. We're asking you to go deep and shine your light. What is it you need to release? Whatever it is you need to release, type it in the comments. We release all of it. The shame, the guilt, the pain. for this time of fellowship we thank you that you are a God who answers prayer and we lift up every prayer request that was typed in the comments this morning we just lift it up to you God we ask that your will is done and as everyone is typing in everything that they are going to be releasing on this morning I ask that you fill them with your peace your love your joy and your strength in Jesus name amen Amen. So what is it you need to release today and let go? Type it in the comments and just release it on today. Amen. All right, you all. So we stayed there a little bit longer than usual, but that is okay. So I'll give you all a moment to continue to type that in the comments. What is it you need to release? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it shame? Is it guilt? Is it unforgiveness? Is it bitterness? What is it? What do you need to release on today? Go ahead and type that in the comments and just release it. Make a decision to release it today. Amen. And so while you all are doing that, I am going to um, pull up the one-year Bible. What a great way to start the day. Amen. So... Amen. All right, let me get this done. Okay. I'm like, what are we doing?
of the line. It's coming up. It's the internet. <laughs> okay, here we go. And so when I um, turn this on, um, if the volume is okay, type a number two. I kind of quickly saw someone ask me to turn the volume up on Warship. Um, and I use, usually have it at a certain level, so I hope um, you all were able to hear it okay. Ooh, that's good. Forgive yourself. Listen, yes. We must do that. Must forgive ourselves. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the word. Type the number two if the volume is okay. February 5th. Our reading in the Old Testament today will come from the book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 22. We'll go through chapter 23, verse 13. Now, having stated his basic law, God then told Moses how to apply it to specific situations so that everybody would receive equal justice, which is the principle in verses 22 to 25. No person was to take the law into his or her own hands. Laws and government have been instituted by God, and we are to respect them. We'll read about property as we get into the 22nd chapter of Exodus. God wants us to respect personal property. And the key idea here is restitution. It's not enough to admit the okay. crime and show sorrow over it. No, there must also be a readiness to make things right with those who've been hurt. And we'll read about some persons here. These many laws reveal the holiness of God and his desire that we be a holy people. God has compassion on widows and orphans, poor workers and strangers. Do we? If we truly love God with all our hearts, we will have no desire to hurt others. Amen. But if God is not first, mm -hmm. well, we'll start exploiting people to get what we want. Mm -hmm. And with that, let's begin our reading today here in the Old Testament. Good morning. Go ahead and share the video. Now's a great time to share. February 5th, Exodus chapter 21, verse 22. Through chapter 23, verse 13. Now suppose two people are fighting, and in the process they hurt a pregnant woman so her child is born prematurely. If no further harm results, then the person responsible must pay damages in the amount the woman's husband demands and the judges approve. But if any harm results, then the offender must be punished according to the injury. If the result is death, the offender must be executed. If an eye is injured, injure the eye of the person who did it. If a tooth gets knocked out, knock out the tooth of the person who did it. Similarly, the payment must be hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. If an owner hits a male or female slave in the eye and the eye is blinded, then the slave may go free because of the eye. And if an owner knocks out the tooth of a male or female slave, the slave should be released in payment for the tooth. If a bull gores a man or a woman to death, the bull must be stoned, and its flesh may not be eaten. In such a case, however, the owner will not be held liable. Suppose, on the other hand, that the owner knew the bull had gored people in the past, Yet the bull was not kept under control. If this is true, and if the bull kills someone, it must be stoned, and the owner must also be killed. However, the dead person's relatives may accept payment from the owner of the bull to compensate for the loss of life. The owner will have to pay whatever is demanded. The same principle applies if the bull gores a boy or a girl. But if the bull gores a slave, either male or female, the slave's owner is to be given 30 silver coins in payment, and the bull must be stoned. Suppose someone digs or uncovers a well and fails to cover it, and then an ox or a donkey falls into it. The owner of the well must pay in full for the dead animal, but then gets to keep it. If someone's bull injures a neighbor's bull, and the injured bull dies, 
then the two owners must sell the live bull and divide the money between them. Each will also own half of the dead bull. But if the bull was known from past experience to gore, yet its owner failed to keep it under control, the money will not be divided. The owner of the living bull must pay in full for the dead bull, but then gets to keep it. A fine must be paid by anyone who steals an ox or sheep and then kills or sells it. For oxen, the fine is five oxen for each one stolen. For sheep, the fine is four sheep for each one stolen. If a thief is caught in the act of breaking into a house and is killed in the process, the person who killed the thief is not guilty. But if it happens in daylight, the one who killed the thief is guilty of murder. A thief who is caught must pay in full for everything that was stolen. If payment is not made, the thief must be sold as a slave to pay the debt. If someone steals an ox or a donkey or a sheep and it is recovered alive, then the thief must pay double the value. If an animal is grazing in a field or vineyard and the owner lets it stray into someone else's field to graze, the animal's owner must pay damages in the form of high-quality grain or grapes. If a fire gets out of control and goes into another person's field, destroying the sheaves or the standing grain, then the one who started the fire must pay for the lost crops. Suppose someone entrusts money or goods to a neighbor and they are stolen from the neighbor's house. If the thief is found, the fine is double the value of what was stolen. But if the thief is not found, God will determine whether or not it was the neighbor who stole the property. Suppose there is a dispute between two people as to who owns a particular ox, donkey, sheep, article of clothing, or anything else. Both parties must come before God for a decision, and the person whom God declares guilty must pay double to the other. Now suppose someone asks a neighbor to care for a donkey, ox, sheep, or any other animal, but it dies or is injured or gets away, and there is no eyewitness to report just what happened. The neighbor must then take an oath of innocence in the presence of the Lord. The owner must accept the neighbor's word and no payment will be required. But if the animal or property was stolen, payment must be made to the owner. If it was attacked by a wild animal, the carcass must be shown as evidence, and no payment will be required. If someone borrows an animal from a neighbor, and it is injured or killed, and if the owner was not there at the time, the person who borrowed it must pay for it. But if the owner is there, no payment is required. And no payment is required if the animal was rented because this loss was covered by the rental fee. If a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged to anyone and sleeps with her, he must pay the customary dowry and accept her as his wife. But if her father refuses to let her marry him, the man must still pay the money for her dowry. A sorceress must not be allowed to live. Anyone who has sexual relations with an animal must be executed. Anyone who sacrifices to any god other than the Lord must be destroyed. Do not oppress foreigners in any way. Remember, you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Do not exploit widows or orphans. If you do, and they cry out to me, then I will surely help them. My anger will blaze forth against you, and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives will become widows, and your children will become fatherless. If you lend money to a fellow Hebrew in need, do not be like a money lender charging interest. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge of repayment, you must return it by nightfall. Your neighbor will need it to stay warm during the night. If you do not return it, and your neighbor cries out to me for help, then I will hear, for I am very merciful. Do not blaspheme God 
or curse anyone who rules over you. Do not hold anything back when you give me the tithe of your crops and your wine. You must make the necessary payment for redemption of your firstborn sons. You must also give me the firstborn of your cattle and sheep. Leave the newborn animal with its mother for seven days. Then give it to me on the eighth day. You are my own holy people. Therefore, do not eat any animal that has been attacked and killed by a wild animal. Throw its carcass out for the dogs to eat. Do not pass along false reports. Do not cooperate with evil people by telling lies on the witness stand. Do not join a crowd that intends to do evil. When you are on the witness stand, do not be swayed in your testimony by the opinion of the majority. And do not slant your testimony in favor of a person just because that person is poor. If you come upon your enemy's ox or donkey that is strayed away, take it back to its owner. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you struggling beneath a heavy load, do not walk by. Instead, stop and offer to help. Do not twist justice against people simply because they are poor. Keep far away from falsely charging anyone with evil. Never put an innocent or honest person to death. I will not allow anyone guilty of this to go free. Take no bribes, for a bribe makes you ignore something that you clearly see. Mm -hmm. A bribe always hurts the cause of the person who is in the right. Do not oppress the foreigners living among you. You know what it is like to be a foreigner. Remember your own experience in the land of Egypt. Plant and harvest your crops for six years. But let the land rest and lie fallow during the seventh year. Then let the poor among you harvest any volunteer crop that may come up. Leave the rest for the animals to eat. The same applies to your vineyards and olive groves. Work for six days and rest on the seventh. This will give your ox and your donkey a chance to rest. It will also allow the people of your household, including your slaves and visitors, to be refreshed. Be sure to obey all my instructions. And remember, never pray to or swear by any other gods. Do not even mention their names. Amen. Now is a great time to share what you have shared. Fifth. And now as we turn our attention to the reading of the New Testament, our narrative today will come from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 1 through 28. The theme is the tribulation, the day of the Lord, that will come upon the world in the last days. In chapter 24, verses 1 through 35, the emphasis here is on the signs of his coming to the earth and is directed primarily to Israel telling the people to watch and be ready. But these words have a message for the church today because coming events cast their shadows before. Watch we're and looking be for the ready. Savior and not for the signs because he can come at any time. But as we see these things developing in our world, well, we're encouraged to expect him very soon. And then this passage of scripture focuses on the church rather than Israel. Amen. The emphasis is not on signs, but on the fact that Jesus can return at any time. When he comes, he will reckon with his servants and reward those who have been faithful. So it behooves us to be ready. All right, with that, let's begin our Stay reading today ready here in so the New Testament. so we don't have to get ready. Stay ready. Watch and be ready. February 5th, Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 28. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings. But he told them, Do you see all these buildings? I assure you, they will be so completely demolished that not one stone will be left on top of another. Yes. Later, Jesus sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and asked, When will all this take place? And will there be any sign ahead of time to signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus
Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah. They will lead many astray. And wars will break out near and far. But don't panic. Yes, these things must come. But the end won't follow immediately. The nations and kingdoms will proclaim war against each other. And there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this will be only the beginning of the horrors to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because of your allegiance to me. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will lead many people astray. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But those who endure to the end will be saved. Say, I will and endure the good news to the end. about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world, so endure. that all nations will hear it. And then, finally, the end will come. The time will come when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about. The sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person outside the house must not go inside to pack. A person in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for mothers nursing their babies in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for that will be a time of greater horror than anything the world has ever seen or will ever see again. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, the entire human race will be destroyed. But it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Then, if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't pay any attention, for false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great miraculous signs and wonders so as to deceive, mm -hmm. if possible, even God's chosen ones. Mm -hmm. See, I have warned you. So if someone tells you, look, the messiah is out in the desert, don't bother to go and look. Or, look, he is hiding here. Don't believe it. For as lightning lights up the entire sky, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. Psalm 29, verses 1 through 11. Praise before the storm. David called on the angels in heaven to ascribe praise to God. So you never know when a storm is coming. Yeah, so I'll type so that in. Sure I will not be deceived. Him and giving him all the glory. Mm -hmm. The greatest beauty of all is the beauty of holiness. And it comes from worshiping the Lord. You'll have power in the storm. First, the thunder rolled over the Mediterranean Sea. Then the storm broke and moved across the land. Seven times, the storm is called the voice of the Lord. What power there is in a storm. Even the angels shout glory as they watch it. And then, of course, there is peace after the storm. David may have seen a rainbow and remembered God's promise given after the flood. God sat as king at the flood. And he is still king. No storm is greater than God. If you trust him, the storm will bring glory to God. If life is stormy just now, worship him and wait on him. Yes. The storm will pass. Worship and, and wait. And he will give you peace. He'll say, I will worship Psalm and wait. Verses 1 through 11. Psalm of David. Give honor to the Lord, you angels. Give honor to the Lord for his glory and strength. Give honor to the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders.
thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon's mountains skip like a calf and Mount Hermon to leap like a young bull. The voice of the Lord strikes with lightning bolts. The voice of the Lord makes the desert quake. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forests bare. In his temple, everyone shouts, Glory! The Lord rules over the floodwaters. The Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. Amen. Say, I receive it, his peace and strength. Proverbs chapter 7, verses 6 through 23. I was looking out the window of my house one day and saw a simple-minded young man who lacked common sense. He was crossing the street near the house of an immoral woman. He was strolling down the path by her house at twilight as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. The woman approached him, dressed seductively and sly of heart. She was the brash, rebellious type who never stays at home. Amen. She is often seen in the streets and markets, soliciting at every corner. She threw her arms around him and kissed him. And with a brazen look, she said, I've offered my sacrifices and just finished my vows. It's you I was looking for. I came out to find you, and here you are. My bed is spread with colored sheets of finest linen imported from Egypt. I've perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caresses, for my husband is not home. He's away on a long trip. He has taken a wallet full of money with him, and he won't return until later in the month. So she seduced him with her pretty speech. With her flattery, she enticed him. He followed her at once, like an ox going to the slaughter, or like a trapped stag awaiting the arrow that would pierce its heart. He was like a bird flying into a snare, little knowing it would cost him his life. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, this gives us so much to think about. Sounds just like the enemy himself where he comes and he lies and he entices us and make things look good and seem good, sets traps and lays traps before us. And little do we know, right? And so my prayer is that my prayer is always, Lord, help me to not be deceived. So many of us are deceived. So many are deceived and don't even know that they're received, deceived. And so little did he know, right? Little did he was like a bird flying into a snare, little knowing it would cost him his life. Little did he know. So as I was sitting and listening to this, I'm like, man, this is deep. So let's meditate on this today. Proverbs 7, verses 6 through 23. Proverbs 7, verses 6 through 23. All right, so um, let me go ahead and share this. So I did not go live yesterday, and I'm totally blaming it on um, my little Bo the Beagle. Um, just wasn't, I was going to say, Akin right, A-C-K-I-N-G, Akin right. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, so I didn't get to go live yesterday, but I do want to share what I had yesterday. I didn't want to just skip it. Um, so someone type Psalm, uh, do people still say type? <laughs> Somebody type or put Psalm 28.7 in the comments. 28.7, Psalm 28.7. And again, this was the verse from um, yesterday, but I want to share what I had. That's right. Stay ready. That's right. Stay ready so we don't have to get ready, right? Um, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of 
thanksgiving. And so that led me to a few other verses that I want to share. Um, someone type in Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And so for those of you that are new, we go into a time of worship, we listen to the word, and then most oftentimes the Lord will kind of give me something to share during our little family chat that we're having right now. So that's what we're doing. Um, Psalm 37, 5, Psalm 37, 5, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. I know this is blessing somebody this morning, um, just hearing this word. Psalm 40, verse 4, if someone can type that in, Psalm 40, verse 4, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who do not, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. All right. Why can we trust God? Why can we trust God? So, yeah, this is just talking about trust. I don't think we can talk about that enough because everything all goes back to trust. And in these trying times, you know, with everything that's going on, it is in these moments that we must truly, good morning, Carmen, that we must truly trust God. And you may be asking, and I know, and I felt it and I heard it. Someone asked, why? Why can I trust God? I remember even asking that question myself before. Why can I trust God? And we can trust him because he has proven himself to us. He has proven himself to us over and over and over again. So before I move on, I want you to type in the comments. How has God proven himself to you? How has he proven to you that you can trust him? somebody type that in the comments how has God proven to you time and time again over and over and over that you can trust him he can be trusted that is one thing I learned for sure that he can be trusted thank God he is not like man right he can be trusted so is someone gonna type that in for me he has proven we can trust him over and over and over and over again so how how has he proven himself to us Keisha number one through his character qualities in the Bible through his quality characters in the Bible how has he proven himself over and over and over to us again through his care for us in life through his care for us in life. So yes, that is a question I want you all to meditate on after the broadcast. How has God proven to you that you can trust him? It's personal. How has God proven himself to us? He has proven himself to us through the cross, through the cross, through the cross. These are just a few ways through the cross. And so I want you to get personal. I want you to think about how is it that God has proven to me personally that he can be trusted. We know he's proven himself through, you know, his character in the word. You know, we know that he has proven himself time and time and time again. There's no way that we can read these this word and not know that we know that we know that God can be trusted. He's already proven that. All right, so what are five ways that we can trust God with all of our heart? What are five ways that we can trust God with all of our heart? Number one, by acknowledging his sovereignty, by acknowledging his sovereignty first and foremost. And the second is by looking for his goodness, by looking for his goodness. No matter what situation you're in, even when I'm going through hard times or things that I feel is bad, I try to take the time to sit and look for his goodness. And most often times, we don't have to look long and we don't have to look hard. So how can we um, trust God in all of our heart, even during hard times? It's by looking for his goodness, right? Whatever it is that we look, we're looking for, we will find, right? Whatever it is that we're looking for, you will find it. And listen that is so true whatever it is that we are looking for 
we will find it. It doesn't matter what situation it's that because for me, someone that I felt feels like I struggle with rejection all my life. And you know, we know rejection is a spirit, but we're not going to talk about that today. I always looked for that, you know, especially in relationships and friendships. You know, anytime I've gotten myself into anything, especially something new, always looking for it, and we will always find what it is that we're looking for. And so if we train ourselves, you know, to always look for God's goodness, always, always looking for his goodness, always, it's all around us, right? It totally helps to shift everything. All right. And one thing why that's so important, because if we don't believe that God is good, we won't trust him. It starts with us believing that he is good, believing that everything that he does is good, believing that he works all things together for our good. You know, if we don't believe that he's good, we'll have a hard time trusting him. And that, that, that's, that I know that personally. So how can we trust God with all of our heart? The third is trust in the Bible and study it with intent. Trust is this helping anybody this morning? Y'all are quiet in the comments, or maybe y'all just writing. <laughs> Trust in the Bible and study with intent. The word is trustworthy. Somebody type that in the comments. The word is trustworthy. The word is trustworthy. Um, number four, we can ask God to help him trust him more. Hashtag ask me how I know. Because of um, the trauma and things that I went through with just men in general, earthly father, you know, father, stepfather, uncles, just all the men, I had a hard time trusting God. And I just remember one day asking him, help me to trust you more. And he did this, just that. All right. He wants to help. So we can simply ask, help me to trust you more. That's definitely a prayer he will answer in honor. Number five. Uh, we need to begin to act in trust, act in trust. And by and how we do that by showing him that we believe what he says, right? By obeying him in our actions. When we obey him in our actions, that's one way to show him that we believe what he says. So um, number five is act in trust. So those are five things that I learned and began to practice. Um, Psalm 37, 3, I want to leave you all with. Is this helping anybody? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. And that was Psalm 37, 3. So all of the scripture references that I gave you all today, um, I think I just gave you, I gave you a few, but I want to leave you with a few more. What was one and two? One and two was acknowledge his sovereignty. And number two was look for his goodness. Look for his goodness. Number three, trust in the Bible and study it with intent. Number four, ask God to help you to trust him more. It's that simple. And then number five, act in trust by showing him that you believe him by obeying um, him in our actions. So our declaration for today is I declare that I will put Psalm 37, three into action. I declare that I will put Psalm 37, three into action. What is Psalm 37, three? Trust in the Lord and do good. I will trust in the Lord. I will do good. I will dwell in the land and breathe and befriend faithfulness. So trust in the Lord, do good, dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. All right, so let me leave you all. I'm going to give you six. So someone type these in for me. Six more scripture references to meditate on. And this is so important. And this is a subject um, or something that we all oftentimes I feel like maybe if not every week, at least every other week, the topic of trust. Everything all goes back to trust. You know, do you trust him or who or what are you putting your trust in? Um, so Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah 26, 3, if someone can type that in. And then I have a few more. Isaiah 26, 3. I hope this is helping somebody this morning. Um, Psalm 28, 7. Psalm 28, 7. I see y'all type in number six in the comments. I don't I don't think I had a number six. 
um, Psalm 9, 10. Psalm 9, 10. Did I have six? I don't think I had six. Psalm 112, verse 7. Psalm 112, verse 7. Psalm 112, verse 7. Um, two more. Joshua 1, 9. Joshua 1, 9. What am I missing? I keep seeing everyone type six in the comments. Did I have a number six? <laughs> Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah 41, 10 is the last one. Isaiah 41, 10. Did y'all get them all? I'll give you all a minute to make sure you got them all. Psalm 9, 10. Psalm 112, 7. Joshua 1, 9. Okay, thank you, Annie. And then Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah 41, 10. All right, awesome. Looks like we got it all. All right. Thank you, um, Viola, for uh, typing that in. All right, so that's it. I pray that this has blessed you all. So um, definitely sit <coughs> before the Lord and just think about, you know, how he has proven, excuse me, <coughs> how he has proven himself to you personally. All right, so that's it. I think today is today Friday. Today is Friday. Oh, it's 526. I have to go because I have to change and get ready for our workout at 545. Um, and Lord knows, I don't feel like doing it this morning. I went to bed at 11 and I got up at 3. I kept hitting the snooze button. I said, get up. Get up. So I took my um, B12. I'm going to take another dropper. <laughs> Oh, I said type six in the comments. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> did I say that? Why did I say that? All right, I have to go. It would be bad if I, um, nope, I'm not going to do that. Show up and work out in my pajamas, right? <laughs> I've done that before. Literally worked in my pajamas. Y'all type in no excuses, right? No excuses. <laughs> Oh, man. Let me get my mind right. Let me get my mind right. Let me get my mind right. <laughs> oh, let me get my mind right. I can do this. Y'all type in, you can do it. I'm, I'm always such an encourager and encourage everybody else. I need to be encouraged this morning. <laughs> um, number one was acknowledge God's sovereignty acknowledge God's sovereignty and number two was look for his goodness all right I need to go put on these workout clothes I'm going to get up and get it done if I oh I said six for six scriptures okay thank you I was like I don't have a number six on here what's why y'all keep typing six <laughs> all right y'all I have to go um so I can get ready I can do this. I can do this, right? I can do this. I got this. I tell you all, all the time, no excuses. Just, I got this. I'm going to get up and get moving. I know I can do it. Yes, share your takeaways in the comments. Thank you, Cheryl. Y'all continue to share your takeaways in the comments. And I'm going to get up and get my mind right. <laughs> Splash some cold water on my face. That's right. My flesh is not the boss of me. Oh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. So I'm going to get up and get moving. <laughs> Okay, see, now I got to go. Yolanda says, I'll see you there. Okay, Yolanda, I'm going to go get ready for y'all. And I may or may not be in my pajamas, but y'all can ignore that, right? At least we're moving our bodies. It doesn't matter what we have on. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I got to go. I got to go get my mind right and get this done. <laughs> You're coming too, Kimberly? Okay, good. So 
And I think Shanita's on here. Okay, all right, all right. Now I can't make any excuses. Bye, y'all. I gotta go. See why accountability is so important? And I'm always posting that accountability works. Accountability is important because I probably would have got back in my bed. <laughs> Bye, y'all.